Hi everyone, in today's video I will be reviewing the TP-Link Archer AX55 which is the AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router. In my video I'll be covering the following. First I'll be performing the unboxing very quickly of the router so that you can see what's in the box. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the specifications of the router and about the ports and the connections of the router. I'll be performing a speed test and the speed test I'll be performing is of course on the internet speed test so i'm gonna charge my connection so i'm gonna put many devices streaming and see how the router will handle the traffic and i'll be also performing a speed test on the usb key that is attached to the usb port of this router and this will show you the sheer speed of the router and also i'll be performing at the end a range test of the router and i'll give you a summary about it so let's start with the unboxing of this router. The router comes in a nice big box. Let's open it. And I'm sliding the router out now. It is well protected and it has a bag on it. So let me remove the bag. You see, I straightened the four antennas so to be able to remove the bag. And also in the box, you have a user manual. You have an ethernet CAT 5E cable, which is capable of gigabit speeds. And you have the power adapter. So this is everything you get in the box. To remove the protection from the antennas, they have a perforation as you see here. You can pull on this perforation. But even with this perforation, it's really very hard and frustrating to remove this protection. And this is something that TP-Link should pay attention to and maybe rectify this in the future. Let me talk now about the ports and the controls on the back of this router. So you have here the WPS button. And I do not advise you to use WPS. I mean, it's not really secure. And if you are interested, I've made a video earlier on how to secure your Wi-Fi home router. So take a look in the description. And in this video, I talk about not using WPS. Here also you have a small hole. It is for resetting this router. And then here you have a USB 3.0 port. Here you have your WAN port. So this is where you connect the modem of your ISP. And earlier also I've made a video on how to configure and to connect this router. So you also can look in the description if you're interested to see how to configure this router and how to connect it to your ISP's modem. And here you have four LAN ports that are gigabit ports and the one port also is a gigabit port. And here you have the power button and here you have the DC input. To talk a little bit about the specifications of this router, this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. It is a dual band router. It works on the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands. And also it works on the 160 megahertz also channel within the 5 gigahertz band, which is a very good thing. And also it has a new MIMO technology and it has OFDMA technology so that it can manage better the traffic on the network. And it has a bunch of features. The most important ones that it has VPN, like a client and server, it also has a quality of service, QoS, so you can prioritize your devices on the network using the application on this router. And it has also like the guest network, it has WPA3 security, and it has a bunch of other features. Now, it has also a feature called Home Shield, and this Home Shield feature is to secure like your network. But unfortunately, this feature it is the basic one that is included for free with the router and the pro one you should pay a subscription for it and this is something that i don't like very much and also for the home shield feature you need to use the tether app to configure it and this is something that i don't like so in no way you can access this feature from your web interface on your computer and this is a shortcoming in my opinion and i talked to tp link support about it but they told me there's no other way to configure the Home Shield feature. So this is a message for TP-Link. Please integrate it in the web interface. It's far better like this. That being said, let me perform now the speed test. And for you to be able to compare the speed of this Wi-Fi 6 Archer AX55 router, I'm going to be performing the speed test opposite a D-Link AC2600 Wi-Fi 5 router so that you can see the advantage of Wi-Fi 6 opposite Wi-Fi 5. The first test here, I'm testing the internet speed without any load on the network. So this is like only my PC is connected to the internet here. 
and you see that both routers give the same speed i have 120 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload and both routers here perform the same so there's no advantage here for the ax55 In this test here i loaded the network so what i've done is that i have two tvs streaming 4k movies at the same time and i have also two ipads playing videos and i have my nest audio that is playing a music also and here you see the advantage of having a wi-fi 6 router especially the ax55 here you see it's still providing very adequate speeds so it's still providing around 95 megabits per second speeds and i repeated this test many times to get accurate numbers whereas the wi-fi 5 router which is the d-link router here but it's not the fault of the d-link all wi-fi 5 routers manage traffic like this so the speed of the wi-fi router dropped to a very very low level here as you see which is 9 megabits per second only and the following test I'm testing the speed of the router here and I'm copying a file, a very large file from the router's USB port. I have a USB key plugged in the router's USB port and this is a very fast USB key. It's a SanDisk Extreme Pro USB key, so in no way it will be a bottleneck. And here you see also the sheer speed of the AX55. It's providing around 35 megabytes per second, whereas the D-Link is providing only 3 megabytes per second. So now I'm performing the opposite test. So I'm copying the same large file from my PC that is connected to the network with a Wi-Fi 6 card to the router's USB port on the same USB key on the router. And you see here that both routers have almost the same speeds. There is a small edge for the TP-Link AX55. It's providing 30 megabytes per second speed, whereas the D-Link is providing 25 megabytes per second speed. Now, this other test here is I'm copying a large file from a PC on my network that has also a Wi-Fi 6 card and to my PC that also has a Wi-Fi 6 card. And here, there's an edge for the Wi-Fi 6 router and the AX55 is providing speeds of around 59 megabytes per second, whereas the Wi-Fi 5 router is providing speeds of around 30 megabytes per second. Here I'm performing the range test. I live in an apartment building and I went out of my apartment into the stairwell about 50 yards from my apartment. So there's like a level of stairs and there's a wall and there's like a thick door also. And it is about 50 yards before the router starts cutting. And it's still providing about 17 megabits per second even with all this distance. As a summary, I'm gonna say that this TP-Link AX55 AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router is really a very good router. And you saw in my test that if you have many devices on your network and many users using your internet, it's better to have Wi-Fi 6 because it manages the network far better than Wi-Fi 5. If you want to check out this router, there's an affiliate link in the description below for this router on Amazon. I will gain a small percentage at no cost to you if you make a purchase using my link, and this will help my channel. Now, for what I like and what I don't like about this router, the best thing that I like about this router is it is really affordable for what it offers. So it offers a USB key, it offers many features, VPN, guest network, and so on. I talked about the features earlier, and also it really performs very well. Now, for what I don't like about this router is the fact that you have to use your Tether app on your smartphone to configure Home Shield and QoS, and this is something, in my opinion, that is not acceptable. Not all people like to use smartphones to configure their things. And many people want to use their computer to do this. And this is something that TP-Link should address, in my opinion. And also, what I don't like about it is that Home Shield Pro is a paid subscription. And I don't like the fact that they sell you something that is advertised that having Home Shield and protection and everything. And then you find out that you have to subscribe for the service to get the full benefits of the service. So these were the only two things that I don't like about this router. So I hope that this video will help you in your choice of purchasing this router or maybe another router. I want to thank you all for watching. And if you like this video, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Until next time.